G'day champions, got a Marshall JCM 2000 here. We've got reports of low output, noise, crackling, uh, clean and crunch, switch only working intermittently, and scratchy pots. So, we all know what we suspect when one of these comes in. Hopefully it's not the bias drift issue, but it may be. Oh, did you hear that? Something's rocking around in there, something's rolling around. <laughs> There's a fair bit of corrosion, like it's been exposed to moisture. Well, if you've been watching the weather in Australia in the last couple of months, couple of years, everything's exposed to moisture. Mains fuse is intact and it is T2A correct rating. Well, how about that? <clears throat> HT fuse. T1, T1A, and it's intact, wow. So let's whack the back cover off, see what we can see. You can see the metal jacks there for the effects loop, they're pretty corroded too. Ooh, hello. KT 77s. <clears throat> one has lost vacuum. The other three look pretty cooked. That one more so. But they all look pretty bad. They're reasonably tight in there still. Preamp valves, getters are intact. The rubber washer thing around that just uh, a rubber o-ring just just disintegrated into powder and that's still got an intact getter jj's all around that's a shame to waste a good jj and this like a general sort of rust and fur sort of on this on the uh, chassis these marshals they tend to let a fair bit of dust in at the top and it just settles on the chassis so the cha chassis settles on the chassis <clears throat> so let's take this chassis out and we'll uh, have a look at the horrors that wait within now I know I say it every video but if you're gonna take a Marshall chassis out of the box <laughs> use a number three Phillips please these screws look more or less virgin Never been chooched. So that's nice, we'll keep it that way. Now the easiest way to get these things out, slide them out part way, reach around the front, give it a reach around, get the reverb cables out. Ooh, they're rusted on pretty tight too, I think. Gotcha. No evidence of fire in the in the cabinet. That's good. Oh, <laughs> we know what was <laughs> we know what was rattling around inside the uh, cabinet and. Likely the reason that it had issues. <laughs> That's one of the screen grid resistors just fell out of the, uh, the chassis there and looks like it's desoldered itself. So it's gotten so hot that it's actually undone its own connections and there's a big crack down the center of it. I can probably break it in half. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Mercy. So that's probably a screen grid resistor for this this one that's gone bad or worse than all of them and lost its vacuum. Ah, oh, such a shame. Ah oh, well, what do you do? So we'll remove them so we can flip it over and sit it on the uh, transformers and 
hopefully there's a bit of a horror show inside. Well, not hopefully for the customer, but for your entertainment. I'll get rid of those. Get rid of those reverb cables there. Just they're annoying me. Three, two, one. Oh, doesn't look that bad. It's decidedly unscabby, actually. Oh, I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> no caps exploded. They're not bulgy. Those caps are okay. Well, they, you know, visually. No evidence of fire. Oh, yeah, R10, R69 are gone. Proper burnt. Uh, which issue of board is this? That's issue 10. There's cracked solder joints on the valve sockets. Let's zoom in and show you a bit of the detail. So most, of, it looks like most of the damage is limited to the power section or the output section, I should say. Uh, it's kind of annoying when people say power valves. To me, a power valve, like rectifier valve, I don't know, output, I'd prefer to say I'm just no ambiguity whatsoever, just output valve or, you know, output section or power section. Anyway, I'm splitting hairs here. So let's see if we can see, you can see what I see. Can you see what I see? Down here, we've got a cracked solder joint. Actually, there's, there's several on each socket. So they've all gotten well hot. Um, what I think might have happened, my hypothesis, you can see down inside there some burnt resistors. That cap's popped its top, or is about to. C37, I'll pull that schematic in a minute, just double check what everything is. R10 down there has cooked itself. Um, R70 is probably taken out R69 as well because it's, it's burnt it so crazily. So it could have just been a failed valve causing all this destruction. Uh, it could be something failing first, like maybe that cap that took the valve out and then caused that destruction. So often there's what we call uh, cascading failures. So one thing fails, takes something else, else out that was relying on it, and then something else fails because it's, a, I don't know, like a screen grid resistor. Um, cops the current from the second thing failing. So, you know, you can have multiple failures caused by one thing. Sometimes it's not worth losing sleep over which started the thing. It's good to investigate as much as you can, but there are sometimes multiple scenarios that could have had the same result. So you sort of have to get it to a point where you can get the thing operational and just take measurements and go from there. So before we go throwing fingers in this thing, uh, I'll just Check, there's no voltage as usual, idiot check. There won't be, but whatever. Zero volts. Zero volts. Check screen node. Zero volts. Sweet as. So I wonder if this fuse has been replaced after the event occurred um, and perhaps uh, it wasn't powered on again after that because I'd imagine this destruction would have blown an HT fuse but we'll dig a bit deeper. First thing I want to do, first thing I want to do is check that this doesn't have the conductive board issue so we'll do our little test with the heat gun and determine that first, otherwise there's no point getting to work on the board and then realising you've got to replace the board anyway. So, let's try that. Okay, here's a quick test. Uh, I've disconnected the uh, output transform primaries completely. I've got just a fluke on resistance mode. Um, one end connected to the uh, grid stopper from the valve the furthest from where all the chaos happens. So if this end's playing up, well that end's definitely going to have issues. So I'm going to heat it up 
Oh, sorry, I've got one, yeah, one end connected to the plate, one end connected to the grid stopper. I'm going to heat it up and see if uh, we get a dropping resistance, indicating a conductive board. So I've got the hot air station set on 200 degrees, not that hot in the scheme of things. Hmm, I think we might be right. That's good. It's an issue 5 board, but it's got the uh, darker sort of fiberglass look to it. Whereas the ones with the issue have that real pale green look to them. This looks more like um, more like the issue 20 board in terms of what material they've used. There's a nice little bit of uh, strand of solder down there that is left from the factory. Just rolling around, that's nice, isn't it? Or an off cut or something. Alright, so next we'll have a look at the end where the damage occurred. Alright, same deal, we're just connected to the grid and the plate with the transformer disconnected. Alright, well that, that's looking promising. I think uh, component level repair is viable on this model, on this, uh, this issue of board. So that's good. So that means, uh, besides the cost of a new set of valves, it should be uh, a viable repair. So I'll throw a dart at that, this one and then uh, send it to the customer and see if he wants to go ahead. I'll chuck a bit of margin in because um, these things can be a little bit unpredictable when so much um, you know, damage has occurred to the board. But um, I think uh, we should be able to make this work. Right, champion, so the weekend's been and gone. Uh, I've come back to this amp, just having to think about it this morning. I think the leading hypothesis at the moment is that uh, one of the valves has gone short circuit and possibly from the screen grid to the control grid was a short. Uh, so that would have been I, the, the valve that went short because R76 was burned and fell out, that would have been this valve. So that went short to grid three grid 2 to grid 3, so that's screen to control grid. Uh, sorry, wrong way around, I'm looking at it upside down. So grid 2 to grid 1, so pin 5. Pin 4 to pin 5 would have gone short circuit. That would have offered all the screen supply voltage to the grid stopper, R10, which is fried. Uh, and also it would have gone to R70. Um, and then it would have found its way back through the bias supply. It's popped this cap, which is, yep, indeed, C37. Uh, that's the one that's bulgy. So that would have copped the full screen voltage, and it's only a 63 volt cap. Um, that has dragged via the bias network and the pots that adjusted on the rear panel, which you can't see here. That would have dragged the bias right up for all the other valves and then cooked them as well. So this valve going short, it didn't blow any of the cathode fuses because the current didn't find its path to ground through the cathode so they did nothing they were worthless in this case um, they found their way to ground through the bias network and caused more damage in that area so uh, what we're gonna have to do is basically replace everything in the bias network because possibly the trim pots have failed as well uh, I don't know that we'd be trusting them but I'll maybe look carefully at them and test them carefully but we you know we may as well just change them out for peace of mind uh, replace all these bias feed resistors replace all the bias caps replace all the grid stoppers and check the other screen grids for over dissipation but I dare say that's the only one that's failed there check the cathode resistors the bias sense resistors for drift because uh, it hasn't gone to ground through the cathodes I doubt they would have drifted otherwise it would have probably blown these fuses as well so I'd say most of the damage has been confined up until these capacitors C6 and C7. Uh, so I think this is a pretty viable repair, providing all of that is within the owner's budget and a new set of valves is within the owner bu owner's budget as well. Once we get it to that point, uh, it's going to be a matter of uh, firing it up, carefully testing it, and then seeing if there's any other underlying issues. There was a report of clean and crunch switch behaving intermittently. That could just be the switch. These little yellow plunger uh, push button alternate action switches are pretty crappy and they do fail quite often. So that might be a completely unrelated issue of just the switch. 
but we'll double check that once the amp's in a functional state and check that it's within budget. We'll send a quote, estimate, maybe put a little bit on top in case there's some uh, more dramas. But I dare say that's what happened and I think it's going to be viable. So we'll wait to hear back from the customer and you'll watch the repair once it's approved. If not, this is the last you'll see of it. Take it easy champion, see you on the next one.